Come, this Congress is taking place at a situation of fundamental change, monumental change in world history. Este Congreso está teniendo lugar en un momento de cambio fundamental en la historia mundial. It is a crisis that is frankly unlike any other crisis that we've ever seen. Es una crisis que no, como otra que no hemos visto antes de la historia. And it will have the most momentous consequences. Y tendrá unas consecuencias eh, inminentes. One of the factors which makes it different Uno de los factores que la vuelve diferente is the fact that it's mixed up with, this, with the pandemic. Es el hecho de que se ha mezclado con la pandemia. Now we must be absolutely clear on this. Tenemos que estar absolutamente, tener absolutamente claro esto. This crisis was not caused by the pandemic. Esta crisis no fue causada por la pandemia. It was already being in preparation well before the pandemic started. Ya estaba en proceso de preparación mucho antes de que estallara esta pandemia. Nevertheless, it is now inseparably linked to the pandemic. No obstante, está eh, vinculada inseparablemente de la pandemia. Which has served to expose all the, 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 ma the main fault lines in society. Y ha servido para poner a la vista todas las fallas que existen. En la the, the pandemic, of course, is still raging out of control. La pandemia sigue fuera de control. Subjecting millions of men, women, and children to needless suffering and death. A millones de hombres, mujeres, y niños a un sufrimiento, inne sufrimiento y muerte innecesarios. The last figure that I've seen is that uh, officially, anyway, officially, there are 180 million cases of uh, COVID. He visto unas cifras que oficiales de que hay ya 180 millones de casos de contagio y 4 millones de muertes. And 4 million deaths worldwide. Y a nivel internacional, 4 millones por todo el mundo. Now, the, these, uh, these casualties can only be compared to one thing, and that's uh, the effects of, of a catastrophic world war. Estas bajas solo pueden ser comparables a los efectos que se producen eh, como fruto de una guerra mundial. However, even these figures underestimate the, the, uh, the, the real extent of the catastrophe. No obstante, estas, estas cifras no revelan la auténtica catástrofe de esta situación. A recent study made by the Economist Journal suggests un estudio reciente de la revista británica The Economist sugiere the number of excess deaths que el número de muertes de, en exceso could be between 7 to 13 million within the next two years. Podría ser entre 7 y 13 millones de estos años. We, we are faced with an endless sea of human misery. Nos enfrentamos a, a un océano interminable de sufrimiento which particularly, naturally, particularly afflicts the poorest countries. But this, it, it, the effects don't only affect the, the poorest countries, of course. This pandemic exposes deep inequalities between rich and poor. Esta pandemia está poniendo a la luz las grandes diferencias que existen entre los ricos y los pobres. Not just on a world scale, no solo a escala mundial, but within society, including in the richest countries on earth. Sino también dentro de las sociedades de los países más ricos sobre la tierra. On a world scale, it's easy, easy to quantify. Eh, a escala mundial, eso es fácil de cuantificar. Half the world's population will not get any access to any vaccine this year. La mitad de la población mundial no conseguirá ninguna vacuna, ninguna dosis de la vacuna este año. And the rich countries are the G7, the, the group of seven. Y el, los, los países ricos reunidos en el G7, el grupo de los siete. Only promise to the, the miserable figure of providing 10% of the necessary vaccine for the, to, the, to, to, the, to, to tackle the pandemic worldwide. And to make matters worse, of course, now you've got ever more contagious, uh, dangerous variants emerging. 
las cosas aún más ahora tenemos nuevas variantes eh, eh, más peligrosas y fines. In, 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 particularly in, in un, unvaccinated populations. Particularmente entre población, sectores de la población sin vacunar. The poorest countries in the world have got absolutely no protection against the Delta variant. Los países pobres no tienen ninguna protección contra la variante Delta. I just saw yesterday on television that uh, in Africa, only 1.5% of the population has been vaccinated. Hospitals are turning away. So I showed pictures from Zambia, which is not the poorest country in Africa, Zambia. Hospitals are now turning away poor patients. Only, only, only serving profitable ones. Relatives are forced to bring their own oxygen. Because there's none available in the hospitals. And this is a general picture. It's a general picture. For example, in Indonesia or Myanmar, where harrowing stories are now coming out. I won't, uh, I won't dwell on that because you've seen, you've seen the pictures on television. It, uh, this terrible scourge is having a devastating effect in, in, in Africa, Asia, Latin America, the Middle East. <laughs> Naturally, they talk about uh, taking steps to protect the population. Yes. How can you clean your wash your hands when mi millions uh, lack a a adequate uh, housing, education, or even access to clean drinking water? How can you maintain social distancing in, in the crowded marketplaces of, of, of Lagos or Karachi? Karachi? 1.25 million people were driven into extreme poverty over the last year. Yes. And uh, millions are faced with a choice between dying from COVID or dying of a, of a slow, agonized death from hunger. Yes, as, as Lenin said, capitalism is horror without end. And all of this will ha is having consequences, and it will have consequences. You see that already in South Africa with the riots. It's a huge outburst of popular anger. Which they say, they say was provoked by the arrest of uh, the imprisonment of Zuma. I don't, I don't think that's the case. It's more a symptom of the fact of the fact that millions of people are living in intolerable conditions and they simply can't stand this they can't stand it anymore you know it's, it's not so easy to determine the causes of a pandemic not it's not at all simple you know the black death which is a huge pandemic in the 14th century that was a pandemic. It wiped out half the population of Europe. 
Eso fue una pandemia que se liquidó la mitad de la población europea. And to this day, you know, they do not know what the cause of the, of the Black Death was. They've got no idea. Y hasta el día de hoy no saben cuál fue la causa de esa pandemia. They don't even know what the Black Death was. Ni siquiera saben qué era la, la eh, peste negra. The idea of bubonic plague now has been discredited. Y la cuestión de la plaga bubónica ha sido desprestigiada esa teoría. So is the idea that it was spread by fleas from rats. That's also been discredited. Y también se ha eliminado la de que fueron tortugas que transmitieron las, o sea, que, que transportaban las ratas las que transmitieron la pandemia. What, but what is not under discussion, what is perfectly clear, and that's the important point, is the effects of the, that, that that had on society. The Black Death had a fundamental effect in finishing off the feudal system. It, it, it did. It pushed it over the brink. It was already uh, in, a, in, in a crisis. It, it, it pushed it over the, over the edge. And it had revolutionary consequences. It was a major factor in, the, in, in England in, in the, present up, the present rising. Peasant revolt. Of 1381. Now, you see, I think it, we must be clear, we, we must have a dialectical attitude. Dialectic is on the agenda of this Congress. Now you'll see why it's on the agenda. It's a question of, of, of accident and necessity. You see, from, you, you could say you, the, 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 this pandemic, like all pandemics, really falls under the category of accident. Accident, let me explain. Accident in the philosophical sense of the word. That is to say, an event which might or might not have taken place at a particular time. And uh, we don't have to explain accidents, by the way. It's not, not uh, necessary. It's a, a quite, a complicated, quite a complicated process to explain an accident. There are always many explanations to explain an accident. But what is clear and what is important, as Hegel explained, is necessity expresses itself through accidents, always. That's always the case. As a matter of fact, the, 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 the crisis would have occurred with or without the pandemic. What the pandemic has done is to enormously exacerbate the crisis. That's a fact. You see, there could be any, any number of accidents could have provoked the present crisis. A pandemic, a stock exchange crisis, a war, even an assassination. Lenin was of the opinion that the trial of uh, Emir uh, Zola in France, the, 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 Dreyfus, the, the trial of Dreyfus in France, could have led to a civil war, which could have, could have produced a revolution in France. That was an accident, if you like. So, frankly, we should not spend too much time on trying to explain the accident. But, but, but concentrate on the effects that it has in unsettling the existing order. That's the point. Disturbing the existing equilibrium. And forcing millions of people to reconsider ideas which they've always held. 
de las ideas que, que, se, que se intenta unir. That is the important point which must be discussed here. Eso es el punto importante que hay que discutir aquí. And that's a fact which is clearly taking place. Y ese es un hecho que está teniendo lugar aquí. Now, incidentally, it's, uh, it's an interesting point es un punto that uh, on April the 29th, on April the 29th, The Economist magazine published a very interesting article that explained how past pandemics had the effect of increasing the antagonism between rich and poor leading to revolutionary developments. Now, with your, with your permission, I would like to quote what it says. It's worthwhile quoting this article. Because it shows how the strategies of capital with, with, a, slight, with a slight delay and from their, from their own class point of view always tend to come to similar conclusions as the Marxists. I quote from The Economist. The cholera epidemic of the early 1830s hit France hard, wiping out nearly 3% of the Parisians in one month. Hospitals were overwhelmed by patients whose ailments doctors could not explain. And this is the interesting point. The end of the plague prompted an economic revival like the present time, by the way, with France following Britain, Britain into an industrial revolution. But as anyone knows who's read Les Miserables, the novel by, uh, by Victor Hugo, the pandemic also contributed another sort of revolution. The city's poor, hit hardest by the disease, fulminated against the rich, who had fled to their country homes to avoid contagion. France saw political instability for years afterwards. And it, and it uh, draws the conclusion, interesting conclusion, I quote, as, may, as Les Miserables shows, political upheaval often follows with unpredictable economic consequences. It quotes a recent paper from academics in the, in the LSE in, in London. Who also finds that COVID-19 has made people across Europe adverse to, to inequality. And this is their conclusion, the final conclusion. This is their final conclusion. Such pressures have in some instances 
have exploded into political disorder. Pandemics expose and ex accentuate pre-existing inequalities, leading those on the wrong side of the bargain to look for redress. You see, uh, the, the, these people, they're not stupid. They can see, they can see what we can see. And they are profoundly worried because they understand that even, even the, the boom will not solve anything. The upswing will not solve anything. And the present conditions are preparing the ground for revolutionary developments everywhere. That is where we must concentrate our attention and not allow ourselves to be distracted by peripheral questions and, uh, and I'm afraid to say rather empty speculation. Now you see there's many, many points could be made and along the same lines. You see, the first point I would make is this. Economic growth, which is now taking place, but I'll deal with that in a moment. The economic perspectives, we'll deal with that in a moment. But economic growth cannot mask in mascara the crying social and class contradictions <laughs> that have been exposed by the pandemic, even in advanced capitalist countries. It's well known that the poorest sex, the blue collar workers, and the poor people in the in the inner city areas have been hit the hardest. That's why you had an explosion of strikes and demonstrations in Italy at the beginning, because they were hardest hit precisely. <coughs> Everybody knows that the number of deaths is far higher in poor areas than in the wealthier ones. And, and therefore, and therefore, everywhere, in all countries, there is a burning sense of injustice, anger, rage, and bitterness, which is building up beneath the surface, creating the conditions for a social explosion. It's by the way, it's impossible for, to, for me to, to, to overstate the importance of this. For goodness sake, if, if the bourgeois and the economists are, are able to see what, what is occurring, we ought to be able to, to see it even, even clearer. You know, there's a story that a pacifist uh, one, one time uh, said, uh, said to Lenin during the First World War, he said, war is terrible. He said, war is terrible. And Lenin answered, yes, terribly profitable. Even during the pandemic. You see the figures, I won't quote them, I've got them here, but it's, I don't have time. The rich have grown a, 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 even more obscenely rich. We published the figures about Jeff, Be Jeff Bezos' fortune. There's no need for me to repeat those Hemos, figures. I think they're in the document. Bezos, eh, 
But what is what is astounding is the way that they flaunt their riches. They, they flaunt these obscene, obscene riches as if they're proud of it, you know? La cuestión es cómo alardean de esta riqueza de una forma tan desvergonzada. You have the disgusting spectacle of Mr. Bezos. Tenemos el espectáculo asqueroso de Mr. Bezos. In his space suit. Engaged in space tourism with a few, the few of his ultra rich cronies. And on the other hand, hundreds of thousands of his workers are, are toiling in slave like conditions. For slave like wages. You see, this, this, these things do not pass unnoticed. This attitude, by the way, it, it, it's even more glaring than the, the, than the Palace of Versailles under Louis XIV and the slums of Paris. It is it is it is it is more it is it is more noticeable because it, it's so visible to everybody on the television and the social media. This little episode in itself it shows how far the ruling classes, uh, this parasitic clique, are removed from reality. That's an important point because I think it's applicable to all of them. Politicians, economists. I won't even mention philosophers. No, no not, not worth not worth bothering, bothering with. They are, they are on another planet. Completely. They are, they are as far removed from ordinary people as Marie Antoinette. And according to the famous story, when she was told that the people had no bread, she, she cracked a joke, you know. Let them eat 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 cake. Qu'il mange le brioche, I think, was the expression. In fact, doesn't matter. Let them eat buns. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt, she had occasion to meditate on this, uh, on these words. A few years later, when she was being driven to the guillotine. Oh yes, these things have an effect, you know. This uh, the, 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 and the, 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 this is a fundamental question. Uh, again, it's it's noticed by the the the, the, uh, the strategies of capital. I think we quoted that in uh, in the document. This this quote from uh, L L L yes, Randall Lane. Oh no, it's, it isn't in the document. Randall Lane, the editor of Forbes magazine. Una, uh, Randall Lane, que es el editor de la revista Forbes. This is, a, a, of course, a magazine for, for the ultra-rich. He wrote the following very interesting lines on, on the 7th of April. Referring to the, the, the colossal inequality between rich and poor. He writes the following. These figures will engender endless amounts of consternation. Estas cifras van a generar unas cantidades infinitas de consternación. Most of it justified. La mayoría de ellas justificadas. He says there's no getting around a collective five trillion wealth surge during a pandemic. During a pandemic, they, got, they enriched themselves to the tune of five trillion dollars, according to this man. Eh, según este hombre, imagina, de, no hay manera de poder negar que hay una... una Una, um, aumento. aumento de riqueza de 5 billones. billones de dólares durante una pandemia, cuando la mayoría del mundo eh, padeció escasez, enfermedad y se sintió eh, perseguida. Yeah, the Spanish translation is, is anticipating me. When most of the world felt scared, <laughs> felt, that's good, 
but when most of the world felt scared, sick, and besieged. Okay, that's been translated already, fine. He then goes on to say, capitalism, the greatest system ever for generating prosperity, he says, he makes an important point here, rests upon a social compact of expansion, unequal by design, ultimately lifting all boats, if you can translate that. Descansa sobre un, un, eh, un, acuerdo. Una, un acuerdo social de expansión eh, desigual por diseño y en última instancia lifting all boats. Levantando el nivel de vida de, de, de todo el mundo. Levantando el nivel de vida de todos. Ok. And he goes on. The, the COVID-19 economy has strained that concept. Uh, puesto bajo presión ese concepto. Yawning economic disparity. Llevando a una disparidad económica. Which poses arguably the greatest threat to, to modern social order. Que plantea, se puede argumentar. Uh, You've spoken just over half an hour now, Alan. La amenaza más grande que eh, puede es sobre el orden social de existente, moderno existente. Now, capitalism cannot solve the problem of the pandemic. El capitalismo no puede resolver el problema de la pandemia. Because it is the problem. Porque él es el problema. You know, I note that governments, they like to speak about military, use, use military analogies. El, el, a los uh, políticos les gusta utilizar analogías eh, militares. To describe the present situation. Para describir la situación actual. You know, we are at war with the, uh, with the, with the, the uh, with the COVID and so on. Estamos en guerra con el COVID y todo eso. But if we were really at war with the virus, Pero si estuviéramos realmente en guerra con el virus, then governments would mobilize all the resources to solve this one task. Los gobiernos movilizarían todos sus recursos para resolver este problema. From a purely rational point of view, the best policy would be to ramp up vaccine production as fast as possible. So why don't they do it? Well, they, they don't do it because, uh, because uh, ca capacity needs to be expanded. It means spending money on new factories. And in reality, the big private vaccine manufacturers have no interest in expanding production. Because if they ramped up, because if they ramped up production capacity, so that the, the, the whole world could be supplied within six months, which is possible. What would, they, what would they do with the new factories? They would stand empty for quite a long time afterwards. And therefore profits would be lower. And therefore, they have no, no interest in this. Y por eso no en esto. And that's the problem. Y ese es el you see, in a time of war, en un de guerra, people are prepared to fight and to make sacrifices. La gente está a y a hacer fight a common enemy, that is. Un común, they, they're prepared to accept temporarily a lowering of living standards. And even certain restriction on, rest, restrictions on democratic rights for a time. But this crisis has exposed all the, the corruption, the wastefulness, the, the chaos. The inefficiency of the capitalist system. And the obscene greed of the capitalists. 
And that is the basis for an unprecedented upswing of the class struggle everywhere. Now, in his opening remarks, Rob mentioned that the economic crisis uh, was the biggest, the greatest crisis, the deepest crisis for the last 300 years. The governor of the Bank of England admitted that. But you know, Lenin explained, and we must remember this, that capitalism can, can, can recover from even the deepest crisis. Continue to exist unless it's overthrown by the working class. And now there is the beginnings of, of an economic rebound. Which, by the way, we did uh, we did foresee in the document. Well, and we did we did think it would take a little bit longer. It's, it's taken a little bit uh, less than what we thought. Mainly because the vaccines took a lot a lot uh, was discovered far quicker than what we anticipated. Principalmente porque la vacuna fue inventada antes de lo que nosotros habíamos anticipado. But more, many forecasters are now saying that America's economy can, will grow by more than 6% this year. That's quite a lot. Pero muchos pronósticos eh, dicen que, eh, calculan que la economía americana crecerá este año en más de un 6%. Other countries, other countries are also... Uh, beginning to get un unusually fast growth. Yes, but this growth is, is, is riven with new, new and insoluble contradictions. Now, we must understand another thing also, you know. I sometimes hear comments saying, oh, there cannot be any more reforms under capitalism. <laughs> that is also false. It's true in a general sense that the capitalists uh, can't afford to give uh, reforms. That's in a general sense that's true. But you must remember that when the ruling class is faced with losing everything. They will resort to the most the most desperate measures to save the system. It seems to me that the bourgeois were at the moment they're a bit uh, they're like a drunken man. They're drunk with illusions in the, the newly discovered uh, Keynesianism, Keynesianism, which, by the way, previously they rejected. <coughs> The ruling class is clutching at Keynesianism like a drowning man clutches at a straw. It's quite incredible. They, they talk about spending trillions of dollars or pounds or euros as if they're spending a small, a small change on purchasing a box of matches or something. They've forgotten the elementary truth that governments cannot pluck money out of, the, or out of thin air and use this to get the economy out of a crisis. That's an illusion. <coughs> and yet, and yet, faced with a horrendous collapse, they've been paying the, the wage the wage bill <coughs> of of millions of millions of workers. Out of the public uh, 
budget. Central banks have obliged by flooding the financial markets with the electronic money, with, with fake money, in other words. But this itself is a condemnation of the capitalist system. Ask yourself the question. How can this be reconciled with the uh, oft-repeated mantra of the economists <laughs> who for the last three decades at least have been telling us <laughs> that the state and the government has no role to play in the free market economy. <laughs> Y el gobierno. Y el gobierno pueden, tienen un papel que jugar en la economía del mercado libre. And yet, at the present time, every on a world scale, y no obstante, a escala mundial, the so-called free market economy, el llamado mercado libre, la economía de mercado libre, can only exist on the basis of handouts from the state. Solo puede existir gracias a las donaciones que recibe del Estado. That same state that was supposed to play no role at all. Now this is a confession of bankruptcy in the most literal sense of the word. Because the central problem of this beautiful picture is clear, isn't it? It can be summed up in one word. Debt, Deuda. global debt, La deuda global. that is to say combined debts of house, household debt, es decir, la deuda <coughs> de la deuda domestica. Corporate, co corporate debt, La deuda de las empresas. and state debt. Y la deuda del Estado. The last figures I've seen, they may be out of date, but the last figure I've got. <coughs> is more than 350% of the total world GDP. This is the greatest danger facing the capitalist system. One of the greatest dangers anyway. There are, there are others. It's a ticking time, time bomb of debt. Es una bomba de, de tiempo, la cuestión de la deuda. Built into the foundations of the economy. Y se ha construido en los cimientos, que se ha puesto en los cimientos de la economía. And in the long run, its effects will be far more devastating than any terrorist bomb. Y a largo plazo va a tener unos efectos que la peor bomba de un terrorista. Under Trump, for example, in, in just four years. And bajo Trump, en solo cuatro años. The U.S. public debt rose by seven trillion dollars, no less. No, siete billones. Reaching a, reaching a total of 21.6 trillion dollars. That's more than 100% of the US, US, US GDP. So in terms of public debt, the United States of America is now on the same level as Greece and Italy. But we don't want to talk about that, do we? Now, you don't want to talk about it, but one way or another, it's got to be paid. Now, this policy is also a, a finished recipe for, for, a, for a tremendous outburst of inflation. The Italian comments have added some, some interesting material on inflation, which we've accepted. 
de datos sobre esto que muy interesante si tenemos aceptado. We'll have to we'll have to uh, we'll, we'll have to say more on this subject later. Y tendremos que decir más sobre esto posteriormente. But I noticed that Martin Wolf who's quite a, quite a quite a far seeing uh, economist from the Financial Times. Pero he visto que un tal Martin Wolf, que es un economista adscrito en <coughs> Financial Times, quoting the Communist Manifesto in his own way. Citando el Manifesto Comunista de a su manera. He says, a specter is haunting investors. Dice, un espectro está... Um, eh, un espectro está... ¿Cómo se dice? Um, Amenazando Europa, a, ver, a, los, a los inversores, perdón. The, the, the return of inflation. Es decir, el, el retorno de la inflación. And this is, this is a recipe, this recipe for an absolute explosion of hyperinflation at a certain stage. Y eso es una receta acabada para llegar a la hiperinflación. And the rising inflation in the States in March, April and May seems to confirm this tendency sí. already. Los índices de inflación en, en, de los Estados Unidos entre marzo, abril y mayo parecen confirmar esto. Now, normally, you see, uh, the, the role of a central bank, like the, the, like the Federal Reserve. Y normalmente, eh, es, instituciones como, por ejemplo, la Reserva Federal. Is to increase uh, interest rates. Su tarea es <coughs> eh, aumentar los, las tasas de interés. To dampen down inflation, that's the purpose of it. Poder, eh, and also to, to, to bolster the currency, the dollar in this case. <coughs> but the Federal Reserve is not doing that. They're not increasing uh, interest, uh, interest rates. That's because they terrified that any increase in interest rates would, would, co would cause an immediate slump. Es porque tienen, están aterrorizados de que este aumento de las tasas de interés podría producir una caída brutal en el de la economía. That's a well-founded fear, by the way. Y ese es un que está bien fundado. And they're under pressure from Biden not to do this. They're under, under pressure from Trump not to do this. Y están bajo presión por parte de Biden y lo estaban también antes por parte de Trump para que no tomen esa, esa, esa iniciativa. Of course, Joe Biden insists that the, the Federal Reserve is independent, of course. Independent, of course, it is. Insiste en que la Reserva Federal es un organismo independiente, claro. That, of course, is, is a ridiculous uh, fiction. Pero eso obviamente, es obviamente una ficción ridícula. There's no way that the Federal Reserve is independent. No hay, de ninguna manera la Reserva Federal es independiente. It's only the money that's flow, the, the fake money. Talk, talk about fake news. This is fake money. Es It's only the fake money that's coming from the Federal Reserve. Hablando de fake news, de, de noticias falsas. Es este, también, eh, también tenemos eso saliendo de la Reserva Federal, o sea, eh, dinero falso. That's coming from the Federal Reserve. It's only that which is, which is propping up the, the government uh, finances. Y eso es lo único que está consiguiendo levantar la economía. The Wall Street is now placing all its hopes on the Biden administration. Así que ahora Wall Street está poniendo todas es, eh, sus esperanzas en la administración de Biden. And they're pushing him to, in, to increase, not to decrease, but to increase state intervention in the economy. Y están presionándole para que aumente y no disminuya su Biden lost no time in unveiling his plans for a 1.9 uh, trillion dollar stimulus package for, to, 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 to support the economy. Biden immediately put a plan of 1.9 billion dollars of stimulus for the economy. Now, all of this adds, adds up to a mountain of debt. Todo esto lleva a una montaña de deuda. The problem with mountains, as the Austrian and Swiss comrades know, is that the, some, they, they eventually experience avalanches. Y lo que pasa como los... But they are ignoring the danger. Serious economists like Martin Wolf and others are warning them, for Christ's sake, be careful, you're preparing a... Economistas como, serios como Martin Wolf An explosion of inflation. They're like a drunken man, you know, you, you know what happens. Well, perhaps you, I don't, I'm inexperienced in these matters, you know. 
Uh, este es como un hombre borracho, ya sabéis. A party and you have a few drinks and you feel quite sure. You have a few more drinks, you feel even better, you know. In the end, you're completely drunk. And there's always some guy, there's always some horrible chap that comes up and taps you on the shoulder. A party pooper is called in English. A party pooper. Yeah, yeah, you, you better stop drinking, you know. You, you, you'll have a terrible hangover in the morning. What do you say to this chap? Well, I don't know, of course. I've, I've never had the experience, of course, myself. Uh, but you, uh, you would say words to the effect of translate to standby. Oh, no, I don't leave me alone. <laughs> Something like that, anyway. Of course, and uh, of course, uh, the next day you do wake up with a terrible hangover. And what do you say then? Oh, never again, never again. I've learned my lesson. Yes, till, till the next party. <laughs> that's, how the, that's how the capitalist economy works. But, but, but the bourgeois is, is, is blissfully, they're ignoring all the, the warning signs. They say, why worry we doing all right? There's no inflation. Look, it's, we're doing fine. <coughs> yeah. The, the, the warning signs, signs are flashing red and the ruling class is ignoring them. You know, there's, 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 a, there's, there's an old Indian proverb, you know. Uh, Alan, the translators would like to slow down a little bit. Oh, the translators are having problems, I beg your pardon. Apo apologies to the translators. There is an old Indian or Chinese proverb. I was think thinking of the party, you know, I was getting quite cheerful, uh, quite, quite happy. Um, <laughs> the Chinese proverb, a man who rides on the back of a tiger. Will find it difficult that when the time comes to dismount. The ruling class is riding on the back of the, the tiger of inflation. It's full steam ahead. Vapor. Until they hit a brick wall. That's the but that's the perspective. That's one danger. There are other dangers. You know, uh, 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 Trump's pr Trump uh, adopted a, a protectionist policy. America first. That, that threatened the entire structure of globalization. Which is painfully put together over a period of decades. He picked a, picked a fight with China. But uh, yes, but Biden is now pursuing the same policy. One of his first acts was to order a hundred day review. Of, all, of, of the security of all of America's supply chains. They're particularly concerned about microchips. 
ocupados principalmente de, por los microchips. Which is a key, a key strategic question for American capitalism. Y para el capitalismo americano es una cuestión est estratégica. I don't know if you know this, but all the microchips in the world are created in, two, in, in one of two places. No sé si lo sabéis, pero todos los microchips del mundo es, se, se producen en dos lugares. Taiwan and South Korea. En Taiwán y en, en el Corea del Sur. Areas where China is, is, is attempting to extend its domination. Que son áreas en las que China está intentando extender su dominio. Now he's introduced a bill, I think it's called the Chips for America Act. Creo que Biden ha introducido una ley, ¿no? Que la llaman eh, en Chips para el, la ley de América. But in, in general, it's a protectionist policy. Pero en general es una política proteccionista. And this, this will have consequences in relation to China in particular. Y esto tendrá consecuencias particular, en particular en el caso de China. Now, I, I want to deal with China in a moment, but before I do, Quiero tratar de China en un momento, pero antes de que lo haga, I, I said earlier on, dije anteriormente, we must concentrate our minds on the effects of the crisis on consciousness. Tenemos que concentrar nuestras mentes en las implicaciones de la en la conciencia. And even as we said in the document, even an economic uh, upswing. Y incluso lo dijimos en el documento, un un upswing, un um, auge económico. Auge económico. Far from dampening the struggle, the class struggle, it would increase the class struggle. Lejos de reducir la lucha de clases, tendrá el efecto contrario, lo aumentará. Particularly on the industrial front, the trade union front. Particularmente en el terreno industrial, en el terreno sindical. The pandemic initially had a dampening effect on the, on the, on the class struggle, on the mass struggle. La pandemia en un primer momento tuvo un, un efecto de freno en el primer en un, en, al principio. But now this is being uh, relaxed. Pero ahora que esto se ha relajado, you see what will happen. Veréis lo que va a ocurrir. There will be an explosion okay. on the industrial front, the trade union front. Habrá una explosión en el terreno industrial. But uh, above all, what you must understand Pero sobre todo, lo que que is this, this enormous bitterness and, and anger which exists in the population. Esta enorme amargura y cabreo que existe entre la población. That won't go away because a, the, the economy is, uh, is going up. No va a reducirse porque mejore la economía. And there are already, already there are clear uh, indications of a change in consciousness. Now I've got, I've got a stack of figures here, but I haven't got time to give them. Perhaps, perhaps the American Congress can give them. But I have in front of me a whole uh, an, an opinion poll. It's done by a firm called Axios and uh, Momentum, is it? I don't know. Which, in, which, which clearly indicates a colossal radicalization, particularly of young people. Those aged between 18 and 24 years of age. 54% of these people view, view, view capitalism negatively. And 52% had a positive view of socialism. Tienen una, una, un punto de vista positivo respecto a eso. Even more, even more interesting. E incluso más interesante. Is another poll by a right wing organization. Hay otra encuesta eh, eh, por una organización hecha por una organización de derecha. Just, just, just listen to its title. Mira, escuchad el título. Victims of Communism Foundation. La fundación de las víctimas del comunismo. And they found that 18% of young people of that age think communism is a fairer system than capitalism and deserves consideration in America. It also found that 30% of young people had a favorable view of Marxism and over a quarter of Americans, 26%, said that they support the gradual elimination of the capitalist system 
in favor of a more socialist system. 78% believe that political parties and politicians are distant and not interested in the problems of the young people. 78% creen que los partidos políticos y los, y los, eh, y los políticos son, están distantes. The same, the same figures say that we are living in a time of great injustice and exploitation. Y la misma cifra, 78%, dice que estamos viviendo en un periodo de gran injusticia y explotación. And by the way, 66% of Republicans. Y por cierto, 66% de republicanos. Uh, 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 um, only 66% of Republican of that age, 18 to 34, have a positive view of capitalism. Solo 66% de republicanos de ese grupo de edad eh, tienen un punto de vista positivo del capitalismo. That's down from 81% in January to, to, to 2019. Eso se ha reducido de, en, en enero del 2019, la cifra era de 81%. No, I've got lots of other, I've got, I've got too many figures, you know, but I think you've got the picture. Demasiadas cifras. Si here in embryo, Aquí, en embrión, we have the outcome of, of the, the outline of future, revolutionary developments in the future. Vemos el, el delineado los, los de, desarrollos revolucionarios del futuro. Now, I haven't got a lot of time to speak about China. That would require a separate discussion. No puedo hablar mucho de China porque además eso re, requiere una discusión aparte. But as you predicted in the document, China is already recovering faster than its competitors from the pandemic. Pero como predijimos en el documento, China se está recuperando a mayor velocidad. Que But of, co of course, the, the problem la... is... Pero that the Chinese exports are rising. It's been rising every, uh, Chinese exports have been rising every month since June 2020. But this very success is, is, is also its undoing. Every action is an equal and opposite reaction. China has got to export in order to survive. China tiene que exportar para sobrevivir. But of course, it, it, it faces then, then the reaction of the states, the measures that have been taken. Pero se enfrenta a, las, a los Estados Unidos, a las, a las, a, o sea, a, los, a los medidas. And that, that's, co that's, that's caused serious, pro China. serious problems for China's exports. Y eso está provocando unos problemas graves para sus exportaciones. And this in turn can, can cause serious internal problems in China. Y esto podría causar problemas graves internos en China. China must get 8% growth a year China necesita un 8 de crecimiento anual. just in order in order to to, to, uh, to contain the growth in the labor force Solamente para poder, eh, el de la fuerza laboral. but already there's been a series of bankruptcies and factory closures Pero ya ha habido una serie de bancarrotas y cierres, eh, de industrias. So far, the regime has managed to keep a lid on, on, on seething discontent. Hasta ahora, el régimen ha conseguido mantener la tapadera puesta a, a ese descontento emergente. But what happened in Hong Kong, Pero lo que ha ocurrido en Hong Kong is an indication of what can happen in the future in any Chinese, any big Chinese city. Eh, es eh, un, un retrato, por decirlo, de lo que podría ocurrir en cualquier ciudad en el territorio principal chino. Therefore, we must follow events in China very closely. Así que tenemos que seguir muy de cerca los acontecimientos en China. Great events are being prepared in China. Se están preparando grandes acontecimientos which en will China. Change, which will change the destiny of China and of the whole world. Que cambiarán el destino de China y de todo el mundo. Now, you see, I've already dealt with the, with the quest of consciousness. Ya he tratado de la cuestión de la conciencia. And I've got figures here from Britain, which I'll have to cut across. I've, I've got lots of material on Latin America, but again, I'll have to leave that. You've spoken for about just over one hour now, Alan. Yeah. I've got two hours, haven't I? Yeah. Um, COVID, of course, has had a big effect in Latin America. 
extreme poverty levels have returned to the levels of the 1990s. Los extremos, los niveles de pobreza extrema han vuelto a, lo, a, a los tiempos de, 19, de la década de 1990. <coughs> we should remember there were already big revolutionary developments in Latin America before the COVID. Y recordemos que ya estaba habiendo grandes movimientos revolucionarios en América Latina antes de esta pandemia. In, 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 in 2019. En 2019. Now, of course, the, 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 there are developments in, in Chile. Ahora, por supuesto, hay desarrollos en Chile. In Colombia, with the general strike. En Colombia, con una huelga nacional. In Peru, with the victory of Pedro Castillo. En Perú, con la victoria de Pedro Castillo. In Brazil, also the, anti, the rise of anti-Bolsonaro uh, pro protests was a gathering momentum. And all of these political movements, uh, it's mainly the youth and the, 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 the women in particular involved. In the, in, indicate, indicate that Latin America is on the point of, of retying the knot of history. Now, I don't have time to deal at any length with the question of Cuba. Which re really requires a separate discussion. But the situation in Cuba is, is now very serious. You see, the, 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 there have been protests against the government before. But the protests that erupted on the 11th, they started anyway, on the 11th of July. <laughs> And spread to other uh, other uh, towns and cities in Cuba. Indicate a change in the situation. Because of the party, because of the effect of the uh, the blockade. American imperialism tries to throttle uh, Cuba. Uh, the economy is in a serious crisis. The shortage of food, of medicine, of all kinds of things. And obviously this creates a, a mood of discontent. Also directed against the, the abuses of the bureaucracy. <coughs> who are powerless to deal with the situation because they're part of the problem. Naturally, the international media have played up these uh, demonstrations. Presenting them as, as, uh, as uh, defenders of freedom and all the rest of it. And although it's true, the demonstrations were big, far bigger than in the past. You'd have to go back a couple of, a few, a few decades to see, to see anything of comparable size. Yes, but they, they exaggerate the size. They lie through their teeth. For example, they've actually the government also called for pro-government de uh, uh, demonstrations in defense of the revolution, which were widely supported, by the way, also from workers and ordinary people, also not just not just bureaucrats and policemen. That's wrong. There are many honest Cubans that that that, uh, that will support the revolution against the counter revolution. And it, it's been exposed that these these scoundrels in, in, in the mass media actually put pictures of the the, the revolution supporting the, the 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 revolution as as if they were opposing it. So, and, and, yet, and of course, of course, we get the. Yeah, sorry. 
manifestaciones que eran de revolucionarios como si hubieran sido las de los contrarrevolucionarios. And by the way, it is quite scandalous. It's absolutely scandalous. Y esto es un auténtico escándalo. That so-called revolutionaries and so-called Marxists and so-called Trotskyists. Algunos llamados revolucionarios trotskistas. Like the SWP. Como por ejemplo el SWP. Have capitulated to the pressure of the bourgeois media. Ha capitulado ante la presión de los medios de comunicación burgueses. Quite unacceptable. Eso es inaceptable. It is true. It is quite true that, of course, there were some uh, workers and poor people present on these demonstrations. That's true. But the presence, the presence of workers and poor people in a demonstration, is not sufficient to characterize the political character of that demonstration. It's not not sufficient at all. The main slogans and co political content of these demonstrations are clearly counter-revolutionary. Ant, anti-socialist and, 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 and anti-revolutionary. Now, in a situation like that, where the situation is, is very polarized, frankly, you, you have to take sides. We can't uh, we can't remain remain indifferent. No podemos permanecer indiferente. And on this question, y sobre esta cuestión, we cannot admit any kind of ambiguity whatsoever. No podemos admitir ninguna eh, ambigüedad en absoluto. We are in, we defend the revolution and we are against these uh, these demonstrations. Defendemos la revolución y estamos en contra de estas manifestaciones. Irrespective of that, they might be confused elements. Uh, Involved in them, and that's beside the point. We, by the way, as a tendency, we've actively participated in Cuba for some years now. We've participated in, 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 in the debates that have taken place. By the way, very effectively, I might add. And therefore, we've got a lot of credibility among the people that we are interested in, which are the, which are the, the left wing, if you like, of the, Cuba, the Cuban Communist Party, the Cuban YCL, and other people, left wing intellectuals, and so on that appreciate the fact that we've taken a firm stand, que consistently, que in defense of the Cuban Revolution. That does not mean to say that we support the positions of the bureaucracy. We do not. In a large measure, they are responsible for this uh, situation that exists. But by taking a clear position, which we have done, And which we will, and which we will continue to do. We have opened the door for a, a very important echo for our for the IMT in Cuba. I get, I can guarantee it. But it is a complicated question we have to return to. We will, we'll do that at the next IMT. Again, I don't have much time to deal with uh, very important developments in uh, in Myanmar. Where I think uh, the articles that we that, that we produced have have gone down very well, uh, according to my information. But the, the the task of revolutionaries now in Myanmar is frankly very difficult. There's a ferocious repression taking place. And it seems to me anyway that at, at least at this point in time, the revolution has, has reached an impasse. La revolución ha llegado a una, a una situación de impasse. Unfortunately, some of the best youth, uh, some of the youth anyway, have been drawn, drawn into guerrilla struggles. Y, la, y una gran parte de la juventud está siendo atraído hacia la, la lucha guerrillera. You can understand Pero, that. You can understand that. Es, I understand that. Se puede comprender. Yo lo entiendo. But we must learn from history. Pero tenemos que aprender de la historia. As George Santayana said. Como dijo George Santayana. He who does not learn from the past will be doomed to repeat it. El que no, el, el, el que no 
premio del pasado está condenado a repetirlo. We've been here before, Congress. Aquí, ya hemos estado aquí antes. And the, the, the junta, they are, they are a particularly brutal and vicious regime. Y la junta es un régimen particularmente violento. They will resort to any measure to crush these uh, guerrilla groups. Recurrirá a cualquier medida para aplastar estas guerrillas. And therefore, the, the, that, will, that will lead to the loss and for the tragic loss of many of the best and most courageous elements. Y ello llevará a la pérdida de las vidas de, los, de un sector grande de los mejores luchadores. Having said that, of course, that the future of the revolution in Myanmar the, is not lost. Pero, aunque he dicho esto, el futuro de la revolución no está perdido totalmente en, en Myanmar. The masses showed tremendous courage que las masas han demostrado tener una valentía a tremendous revolutionary spirit. Y un tremendo espíritu revolucionario. Yes, but they were let down in the last analysis we must tell the truth. Sí, pero en última instancia they, que decir they were all they were let down by the leadership by the lack of leadership. Han sido defraudados por la falta de dirección. Or rather a bad leadership. O mejor dicho, por una mala dirección. The bourgeois democrats, the bourgeois liberals. Los burgueses liberales, los demócratas burgueses. Who had no, no real perspective of a serious revolutionary struggle. Que no tienen ninguna perspectiva real de una lucha revolucionaria. But you know they say uh, I think it was Napoleon that said defeated armies learn well. Pero que, que fue Napoleón que dijo los ejércitos derrotados aprenden rápidamente. Our task now is to, to assemble the forces that remain loyal to the revolution that still survive. Nuestra tarea es la de reunir a todas las fuerzas que sigue, que permanecen y que siguen leales a la revolución. And under the difficult conditions of illegality to help them to uh, to regroup condiciones eh, difíciles de clandestinidad ayudarles a reagruparse and prepare for better days which will come y prepararse para mejores tiempos que ya vendrán as night follows day de la, de, de, de la misma manera que el día sigue a la noche but I think we have to return to the general point it's not possible to go in, in detail to any particular country pero creo que tenemos que volver a los puntos generales no podemos hablar de en detalle de cada los países everywhere you look what you see is the same picture eh, mires por donde mires vemos el It's not just a crisis, not just, not just any crisis, no not a conjunctural crisis. No es que sea una crisis coyuntural, lo que estamos viendo. What we are facing is a crisis of the regime. Estamos viendo una crisis del régimen. A crisis of the system itself, una crisis del propio sistema. which has never been seen before, I would say, never been seen, not not for a long time, not for decades. One of the elements in the situation, or a new element, is the way in which the ruling class is actually losing control of the situation. Losing control of the traditional instruments they have for running society. Los instrumentos tradicionales con los que dirigen la sociedad. The politicians have, have, have lost control of the situation. Los políticos han perdido la, el control de la situación. Both in the USA and in Europe. Tanto en los Estados Unidos como en Europa. And above all, what is what is concerning them? What, what really is worrying the, the ruling class? Y sobre todo, lo, una, algo que les preocupa a la clase dominante. Is the collapse of the political center. Es el colapso del centro político. This gigantic zero. Este gigantesco cero. That's all it is, the so-called political center. Eso es lo que es un cero, el centro político. And that in itself, what does that, what does that reflect? ¿Y qué refleja esto? It reflects a, a, a sharp political and social polarization. Una polarización aguda política de la situación. A sharp Polarization to the left and to the right. Oh, don't forget that. Not just to the left, to the left and to the right. That's what causes alarm in the ruling class. Which feels the power is slipping from out of his hands. Everywhere you look, establishment parties donde quiera que mires a los partidos del establishment. Which used to be powerful parties, power, parties with influence among uh, many people. Que solían ser partidos poderosos con mucha influencia entre la gente. They are now uh, identified with the masses. 
Not with progress, but with austerity and attacks on living standards. That's what they. That's what they. Uh, that's what they've seen as. Take Britain as an example. Now the, you know I've made the point before, but you know you know dialectics tells us. Sooner or later, things turn into their opposite. Just think for a moment. Just think for a moment. Wasn't so long ago. Well, what, five years ago? Four years ago? Britain was regarded as a model of political stability in Europe. Am I right or am I right? I think I'm right. What's the position now? It's a perfect picture of instability at all levels. And here's an interesting point. For decades, for generations, the British ruling class ruled through two parties. The, the Labour Party and the Conservative Party. The Conservative Party was their main party, the party of the bourgeoisie. But uh, occasionally they get into difficulties. I could use a cricketing analogy, but nobody understands cricket, except the, the British and the Pakistanis. <laughs> I'm not sure I understand it myself. But, there we go. but there are 11 men in, cr 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 in a cricket team, I think. So if the first team gets into difficulties, you pull it out, you put in the second 11. Yeah. Oh, but the, the, if, if the Conservative Party gets in, the government gets into difficulties, you, get, you put in the Labour Party. And since they're all run by respectable gentlemen, I better say nowadays, respectable ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, so yeah, then, then there's no problem because there's no, nothing much changes. But that's not the case now. Let's spell it out. The British ruling class has lost control of the Conservative Party. Can you honestly say that this government of Johnson is controlled by the, the ruling class, by the bankers and capitalists? I don't think so. It's controlled by, by middle class lunatics. With a, with a circus clown as, as prime minister. That's, that's the British government. And the Labour Party? Ah, that's different. They lost control of the party under Corbyn, that's true. That was a, 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 a very alarming development. But we discussed this ourselves. We said that there's no way that the ruling class is going to allow that to continue. <coughs> they mobilized all their forces to destroy Corbyn. And they did, they did destroy Corbyn. And now, of course, uh, the Labour Party swung sharply to the right. There's a battle taking place, but I won't speak on that. The comments will speak on that in the session. The comments know that the, uh, last a few days ago, sources appealed, the, 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 
was prescribed. They did, they, they did this the honor of prescribing it. But uh, we're, get, we're getting a lot of support out of that. So we're, not, we're not worried about that. But uh, yes, they, 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 they don't control the Conservative Party. That's true. That's true. And in the States, can you say that uh, Donald Trump was a representative of the ruling class? I don't think so. Donald Trump was a representative of Donald Trump. And it, it, it escaped their control. And therefore, that, that's the that, that's the uh, the position. Uh, by the way, the, the Democrats were well, not, not the Democrats, but there was a movement under under uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Sanders. Sanders. That's right. But uh, but also represented a serious threat. Uh, in, in the Democrats, there was also the movement of Sanders that represented a threat for them. Anyway, the the worry that the Bourgeois got is this collapse of the centre. They are desperately trying to put it together again. When we were practicing the translation at the beginning of the session, I'm afraid I did something a bit naughty. I was asked to, to say, say something. So I said a kid's nursery rhyme. It's a nice rhyme. I'll tell you what it, how it goes. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty. Humpty Dumpty is, is, is a character like a, a, an enormous egg. Humpty Dumpty had a, had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. Humpty Dumpty is is the, is the center, it's the political center. <laughs> they, can, they can do what they like, all the king's horses and all the king's men are not going to put the center together again. Because the fundamental forces are driving the classes apart, not towards the center. And that's our strength. That's where we come in. The growth of inequality and so on, that, that's the reason for this. Towards, I, I think we quoted that. I won't uh, deal with that. And of course, uh, the, 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 the beginnings of radicalization is taking place. The big, the big movements, particularly of the youth. The youth have been at the forefront of these demonstrations because they're, 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 they're the ones most affected by this crisis. These opinion polls are not an accident. They show a, 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 a clear radicalization among the youth. This generation has no, no, no trust in capitalism. Because they can see what the position is. In America, they used to talk about the American dream. And people, people used to believe this. Many people believe this. Some people still do believe it, but, but less and less. That if I work hard and sacrifice, I can be a multimillionaire, I can be a business, I can do this, I can do that. What, what, what are the facts? What are the facts? This is the first generation in history in America that cannot expect a better living standards than their parents. Uh, 
al nivel de sus padres, del de sus padres. The youth of America have been robbed of a future. La juventud, a la juventud americana le han robado el futuro. And they know it. They know it. Y lo saben. That's the reason for this radicalization. Y esa es la razón de la radicalización actual. Shown by the opinion polls. There was another one, by the way, for, for Britain and for Italy. It showed exactly the same thing. Por estas uh, encuestas de opinión y hay una parecida en relación a Gran People realize that this system, this system offers them no future. La gente se da cuenta de que este sistema no les ofrece un futuro. And therefore, revolutionary ideas and revolutionary uh, slogans find a ready echo among the youth in particular. Y por eso las ideas revolucionarias, las consignas revolucionarias encuentran un eco entre los comunistas. I could say something similar about the role of women. Podría decir algo similar acerca del papel, del papel de las mujeres. It's been, that's also been very significant. Eso también ha sido muy significativo. Look at the huge demonstrations of women in Argentina. Mira. Las, eh, las, la intervención en las manifestaciones en sitios como Argentina, in Ireland, en Irlanda, in Poland, en Polonia, in Spain, en España, the fight for, for rights, equal por, rights, por igualdad de derechos, against injustice, contra la injusticia, and also against the dictatorship of the Roman Catholic Church, y también contra la dictadura de la eh, Iglesia Católica, in places like Ireland, en lugares como Irlanda. I must say that it really did my heart good to see the results of referenda, referendums in Ireland. A place that not so long ago the priests had an absolute domination, absolute dictatorship over, over people, particularly over women. It's finished. It's finished. And all these, my friends, all these comrades are symptoms of a developing revolutionary consciousness. Who can think about it? It's a fact. You know, and in, in and of itself, these, these, these if you like, are symptoms of the development of revolutionary tendencies. So that's one... One hour and a half, Alan. Now you see, you see also another another phenomenon which we must ex explain and understand. The mood of people, the mood of society, as I said, is angry. Yeah, but it's also extremely mistrustful and extremely volatile. There's a distrust of politicians. All politicians, by the way. And therefore, that's reflected in violent swings of public opinion. Both to the left and to the right. You must be prepared for this. What, what, what does this mean? It's perfectly clear what it means. The masses are desperately seeking a way out of this terrible crisis. And they will move in one direction or in another direction. If they're disappointed in one direction, if they're disappointed in the left, they will swing to the right. Yeah, but the opposite is also true. If they're disappointed with them, which they will be, they will swing to the left, even, even more sharply to the left. The economic recovery, I've partly dealt with that. In any case, has got a very extremely uh, unstable character. Because it's based on extremely artificial and unsound basis. It contains within itself all the seeds of its own destruction. And by the way, the higher it climbs, Más suba, it might could climb quite a bit sí, on the basis uh, on the, on the because there's been a, a certain accum a quite a big accumulation of, 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 of spending power which couldn't be used during the pandemic plus the continued injection of the continued injection of massive Amounts of fictitious capital into the economy. 
Mm. Oh, yes, it, it, it can rise for some time. How long? I don't know how long. How long is a piece of string? But one thing you can be certain of, the higher it climbs, the more violent will be the collapse when it comes, which will, and it will come inevitably. But the present recovery is not necessarily a bad thing from our point of view. It will lead to, a, to as I say, to a recovery on the industrial front. Now it's true that the union leaders, and by the way, what a bankrupt bunch. What a bankrupt bunch. Even as, as union leaders, they're useless people. They've been holding the movement back, it's true. That's a factor in the situation, an important factor. They want a quiet life, you see. That's all they want, that's all the bureaucrats ever want, is a quiet life. In the past, in the past that was possible. But it, it is not possible now, my friends. It's not possible. And uh, uh, of course, uh, there, there will be colossal struggles opening up. In which a new generation of class fighters will emerge. The old leaders, in any case, they're old, they're about to retire, they're dying, or they're, or they're, or they're about, about to be pushed out. <coughs> and they'll be replaced by more militant elements. The unions, the unions are going to be shaken from top to bottom. <coughs> now, I will not deal with Britain, at least I'll say a couple of things, but not very much, because the British Commons have got plenty to report, very interesting things to report on. But I said earlier on, you know, thing, dialectically, things turn into their opposite. I've heard some comrades say words to the effect, you can't transform the unions, they're bureaucratic, they, can't, they cannot change and so on. Well, that, that is entirely false. The unions are mass organizations and they, they're open to the pressure from the mass, the same as anybody else. You can see that in Britain already. You see, the communists don't know, they probably don't know this. Unison is the biggest trade union in Britain. I think it's 1.3 million members. A lot of them very poor, manual workers in the health services, porters and so on. But you must understand, this was... The, the, controlled by the extreme right, not the right wing, the extreme right wing. For decades, I can't remember how long. And looking at it, say even even a few months, even a few months ago, even six months ago, I am certain that many people would say, Oh, you can't change Unison, it's solidly controlled by the extreme right wing. You can't change a bureaucratic apparatus like that. Well, my friends, it has changed, it's changing now. And it, that's a revolution, actually, it's a revolution. It's, uh, it sends shockwaves through the rules of, of the trade union movement. But the, the fact is that the left has uh, uh, got not a, not a victory, a sweeping victory. 
in the election to the National Executive Committee. And it's now followed up by carrying out, the, in effect, a purge of the right wing, and it's got control of all the all the major tri- committees of that union. And this has this has very serious implications for the whole of the trade union movement. And also for the Labour Party. You see, the, the Johnson government is now completely discredited. And now you, now you see he's entered into, into, into conflict with the health workers. With the nurses who saved his life. This is a, not a very good area to pick a fight, I think. Not a very good... These hypocritical bastards you know, had the policy of getting people to applaud the health, of applaud the nurses, you know. Yeah. These nurses are our heroes, yes, they are. When it comes to a pay rise, they offered them 1%, which is an insult. Now, Stammer, the leader of the Labour Party, was much more advanced. He said, no, 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 don't offer the nurses 1%, that's a scandal. You should offer them 2.5%. <laughs> it, it, it turned out that the Tories offered them 3%. And the, the, the health workers have turned around and said, no, no, my friend, no, 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 no. The offer of 3%, they said, is an insult. It's an insult to people who put their lives on the line in this pandemic. And you have the possibility you now of a strike of in the health service. It was even the Royal College of Nurses, but even the Royal College of Nurses is the main main union of the nurses, actually. The Royal College of Nurses, it's not even a union. It's a staff association. It's, it's unthinkable that they, they would go on strike. But now they are talking about taking action and they, they probably will. Unless the government makes a better offer. But you see, this shows the, 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 what I said, the level of anger and indignation that's there. Not just among health workers. Not just in Britain either. It's a universal phenomenon. And it will take place. It will, it will, will express itself. Defeated on the political front, the workers will inevitably turn to the industrial front in the next period. And we mustn't look at the union statically, in a statical, uh, superficial sense. We must, to dialectically, we have to look at things, not as they are, but as they were, no, as they were, but as they were, see not yet, as, as they were, as they are, and as they necessarily will become. Even the most backward union will be, will be in the next period, will be, will be shaken up to the, to the, to the foundation. So, what's the problem here? What's the problem? There's only one problem. <laughs> 
The main problem is a problem of leadership. <coughs> this angry mood of the, of the masses, which does exist, finds no expression in the in the official organization none zero well let's be clear about it of course we don't we don't write off the mass organizations we're not sectarians <laughs> yes but, but but we must also be realists and we must must not look at the mass organizations with rose rose tinted glasses it's true we had the phenomenon of Corbyn in Britain, but that's a bit of an exception, I think. And by the way, he played a, in the end a lamentable role, like all the left reformers. Oh, but let's spell it out. The right-wing reformists are agents of the bourgeoisie. They cling to the ruling class. That's their strength. It's also their greatest weakness. That will be the death of them in the long run. But the left-wing reformists cling like death to the right-wing reformists. Oh, we must have unity, we must have unity. When, when Corbyn was in power, if, he, if he'd have wanted to, he could have carried out a purge of the right wing. He could have done it with the support of the rank and file. Why, why, can't the, why can't the Republican uh, establishment get rid of Trump? I'll tell you why. Because they're terrified of him. And the reason they're terrified is very simple. With his demagogy, he's a clever demagogue. He's got the support, the active militant support of the rank and file. <laughs> and any Republican senator or congressman that goes against Trump, he set the dogs on them. He said the dogs on them. That's what the boys don't do. They terrified. They are terrified. And that's what Cor that's what Corbyn should have done with the parliamentary Labour Party. But he didn't do that. He was very meek and mild. You know, unity, unity. So they they undermined him and they destroyed him. Yes. And now they're in the saddle. They don't talk about unity. They stick the boot in. They've, they've kicked Corbyn out. And now they're attacking the left. Of course. They're doing what the... That's the difference between right-wing reformism and left-wing reformism. Anyway, I'm going off the point. You see, these bureaucrats, they think they're smart. They're not smart. They're very stupid people. Their weak point is that precisely that they're clinging, clinging to the capitalist system. At precisely at a time when it's, it's collapsing. And the, they'll be dragged down with that. So the right wing reformers will be dragged down with that system, and the left wing reformers will also be dragged down with it. Which means, which leaves a vacuum into which we can step by appearing clearly as the revolutionary tendency. Ultimately, the, these questions will not be resolved by maneuvers and intrigues and rules and regulations. And
In the last analysis, it will all be resolved on the streets and in the factories. I mean, in Italy, for example, again, I've got no time to deal with Italy. There is no mass workers' party. There isn't. But the, but the, the mood of the workers is clear. It's there. And, and ultimately, that will be reflected in, in an explosion of the class struggle. In which new, new layers will be, will be drawn into the struggle. We saw that in France with the Gilets Jaunes. We see it now with, in India with the movement of the farmers. In, in other words, the whole, the, whole, the whole tide of history is now moving in our direction. But a word of warning, comrades. This crisis will not be settled quickly. It will be a long drawn out crisis, lasting for years because of the absence precisely of the subjective factor. But the fact that it's protracted does not mean to say, say that it will be a smooth, uninterrupted process. It will not. Quite the contrary, in fact. The present period is one of sharp and sudden changes. Process which in the past took many years to develop now can uh, develop over, overnight. The year 2021 will be a year like no other. The working class will enter a very hard school indeed. There will be many hard lessons learned. But from that hard school lessons will be learned. That's the point. And people will draw the necessary conclusions. Now, I haven't got much time left, if, not, if very little. I've forgotten, by the way, to point out the developments taking place in Iran, which is very important. Big strikes of the oil workers and so on. In fact, everywhere you look now, there's the elements of uh, plenty of combustible material. And what is our role in this? You know, our international, as, we'll, as you will see with the organizational report, has experienced a very important development in the last two years. Our comrades have shown enormous uh, resilience and uh, audacity. Facing up to the difficulties and discovering new methods and avenues of work. And as a result, we've grown dramatically. While other groups have experienced uh, well-deserved crises and splits. And a, and a rapidly falling into a well-deserved oblivion as they disappear over the horizon we say bon voyage don't call us we'll call you and this fact the fact that we are the, the, the growth that we've experienced fills us with confidence and optimism in the future. <laughs> I think, I sometimes think we're the only optimistic people around. Our enemies can't understand this. Why are you people so cheerful? <laughs> well, okay, we are optimistic for one very simple reason. 
We are Marxists and revolutionaries. And we base ourselves on scientific perspectives, not on empirical nonsense. You know, pessimism and skepticism can influence nobody. Nobody that's any use anyway. We are optimistic because we know that our ideas are correct and our methods are correct. It's been shown in practice. And that fills us with confidence in the future. But, and I'll finish on this note, there's no room for complacency, comrades. We must not exaggerate. But we are, we are, at the moment, we're only at the beginning of the beginning. Our forces are still small, they're growing, but they're still small. And we will be facing great, great challenges in the next period. And what I ask myself, what I ask you is this. Great possibilities will open up. They are opening up. See that in Britain now? I ask you, are we seriously ready to take advantages of these great possibilities? Well, to some extent we are in Britain, I must say, certainly the Commons have acquitted themselves very well. But what I would say to you is that perhaps we are not completely ready yet in all sections. And we must get ready, ready ourselves as soon as possible in order to face the huge task which, uh, which lo loom before us. What we really require is an internal revolution. I've said this before. A psychological revolution, if you like. We must leave the, the old mentality, this old small circle mentality, leave it behind. We have to we have to uh, professionalize the organization from top to bottom. We have the correct ideas and methods and perspectives. There's no doubt about that. Now we must translate this into growth. Our task is to build, in, in the shortest possible time, a powerful revolutionary army, an army of cadres. That is, that is the most urgent task. And this Congress must play a fundamental role in realizing this task. And with that uh, prospect before you, I'll draw my remarks to a close.